up guys, welcome to the rendition of the Amanda and Rich Show and today we're talking about how you can do well on the car section for the MCAT. We decided to do this video in three parts, so this video is going to be more of a general overview and some general tips for the car section and then we're going to do a second video on like tips and strategies of actually reading through the passage and then a third video on answering questions. So this video is going to be broken up into two parts. The first part is going to be if you have more than four months up until your exam date and the second part is going to be if you have less than four months up until your exam date. All right, so let's get into it. If we have more than four months till our exam date, um, you really want to focus on just reading every single day. Great resources to use are like uh, websites like New York Times, uh, basically maybe your local news website, aldaily.com. We can, um, we can post the link yeah, below. A is in Alpha, L is in Larry. <laughs> Daily.com. So that's an impractical joker's joke if you don't know it, but. <laughs> the most important thing is to get yourself reading every single day. And more importantly, is to start to think about comprehending what you're reading. Sometimes, um, even for myself, like I would sometimes, and I'm sure we've all done this, uh, we would, we read something and then we kind of, you know, are a couple paragraphs down and we're like, what the heck did I just read? Like, yeah. you're clueless on what you just read. You realize that you have no idea what the last two paragraphs or last few sentences were about. So like, when what we mean by like start reading is you wanna try to read actively and learn how to do that and start training yourself to do that. It's a really important skill on doing well in the car section. So if you have a lot of time on your hands, it's um, good to practice that because it doesn't really, it's not something that comes quickly. So the more you practice active reading, the yeah. better. So that one thing is gonna be the biggest contributor to increasing your verbal score. So I'm sure you guys have heard the term active reading before, but maybe you're just not sure what it actually means or maybe you don't know how to act actively implement it in the way you're reading. So we're gonna give you a few strategies on how to actually make sure you're actively reading so that you can benefit from it. The first way that really helped us when we were trying to prep for the, you know, car section was to, whenever you're reading a paragraph, you should always try to keep asking yourself, what's the main idea here? What's the author trying to get across? Um, just make sure you're actively understanding what you're reading because if even if you're like absorbing the information you might not really know like what the point is that they're trying to get across and that's really important um, to kind of grasp that main idea. Second thing that you want to try to do is see how long you can go without losing focus. So like kind of put a timer maybe on your phone or something or your computer and every time you get distracted and realize that you weren't paying attention to what you were reading, pause the timer and see how long you were able to kind of continue. Just so you have an idea and it kind of also creates like a, a new goal for yourself to try to stay focused like for X amount of time longer than you did last time. Our third tip for making sure you're reading actively would be to, this, I guess this kind of goes along with making sure you're picking up on the main idea of what is being said. But also just after you read a paragraph or maybe a few sentences, make sure you remember what you just read. So keep, as you're reading, keep taking a pause and almost like repeat or summarize what you just read to yourself in kind of like a simple manner. That way you're kind of already remembering what they're saying and you might not even have to go back to the passage when you're asked a question about it because you've already kind of formulated um, a better, like deeper understanding of what they were saying anyway. So our fourth tip is kind of linked to tip number three in terms of active reading, just because by creating this awareness of, you know, what the passage is trying to say and by keep, by going back and making sure you understand what you just read, you're also kind of starting to create a spatial memory for where things are. So the more you keep going back and, you know, after the first paragraph, you think to yourself, what was that about? Second paragraph, what was that about? By organizing it in that way, you start to develop kind of a memory for where certain facts are in the passage, which makes it so much easier when you're answering the questions um, to either go back to that paragraph because you don't have to read through the whole passage to find that one part that you remember. And it kind of just helps you create a story and it helps you answer the questions a little bit more easily. Yeah, so that tip is gonna help you with pretty much all the sections because that's relatable to every single section because there are passages on every single section besides mm -hmm. you know the discrete questions. So you know having that um, mindset and ha practicing that technique is definitely gonna help you with the other sections. 
So when the time comes that you have less than four months until your exam date, this is when you should start hammering down, start clamping down. What's the expression? Clamping. <laughs> We're in surgery. <laughs> start, start clamping down, guys. So once you have less than four months until the exam date, this is when you should start um, getting serious and practicing more consistently um, at least six times a week, I would say, if you want to, uh, depending on your level of where you're at, but definitely about six times a week. Um, you know, keep reading every single day. Uh, keep reading the New York Times articles or whatever articles you choose to, whether it's The Economist or um, Time Magazine, whatever it is and start to look into verbal practice. So some resources that I use was the Exam Crackers 101 Passages. Um, there was also a couple passages from like Princeton Review. Um, I pretty much got, I tried to get my hands on as much as I could and I did as much as I could. Don't worry about saving passages until later. The only thing you should save is the AMC passages up until about um, a month beforehand and that's when I would use those passages. But I would say at the four month mark, that's when you should start doing practice passages um, at the three month mark, that's when I would say you should start compiling all those passages um, up into like fake tests. So get nine passages, sit yourself down for about an hour and a half, 10 minutes each passage, um, and run through a simulated test. And um, that's going to be a great predictor of how you're doing. And hopefully you start to see those scores go slowly creep up. So when you are practicing and doing actual passages with questions attached, you want to do the passages timed, you know, give yourself, I think it's 10 minutes, it's about 10 minutes, 10 per, minutes passage per passage if yes. you were to spend the equal amount of time on every um, passage. So you want to give, kind of get used to what it feels like to be timed. And then you also, before you check your answers, want to do it like in the whole thing again, untimed to kind of see if like you caught certain mistakes that maybe you didn't get when you were, I guess, going a little bit faster. Um, but another thing about like, the timing of everything. I think my biggest mistake when I first approached the verbal section was just like being so overwhelmed because like I am someone that really likes to take my time. So I was really stressed out about having enough time to comprehend the, the passages. And I think like when I saw the timer going, it was almost like I was like staring at the timer, like ticking away. And then I was like, I'm not reading fast enough. And I was like distracting myself from actually reading actively because I was so concerned about not being able to finish in time and that alone was like a huge distraction yeah. so like I think the second I stopped um, worrying about the timing of everything and just kind of like read at my normal pace and did that active reading that we were talking about um, in the beginning of the video that's when I noticed my scores started to increase like a lot and like more consistently it wasn't just luck um, so it's kind of like get used to timing yourself but then Almost like ignore the fact that you're timing yourself. Don't like try to keep looking back at the clock and be like, oh, I only have five minutes left. Like just kind of do it and you you have enough time. You really do. Like I'm not the quick, the fastest reader and I think pr like I'm pretty sure you can get through the whole exam without having to like speed read. So I guess just get that out of your brain that you have to like do no, everything yeah, quickly. It's, it's not a... It's not about, you know, reading quickly. It's about mm -hmm. comprehending the material yeah. rather quickly at your average um, reading speed. That's the key factor. Yeah. There's like a ton of programs out there that say you need to be able to speed read, read the passage under like three minutes if more time on the questions. But if you, like my approach was I took about like six to seven minutes on the passage, made sure I completely understood it. Mm -hmm. And then the questions were a breeze for me. Yeah. And the thing is this, I used to do that too. I would think, let me get through this passage so that I can like analyze the questions so much and spend like a lot of time on the questions. But um, that when I did that, I was constantly going back to the passage, not remembering anything. I was easily getting tricked by like any little tricks they would put in there. And if you spend a large portion of your time really understanding the passage, actively reading, um, like you barely even have to look back at the passage because you already have this understanding and you can just use that to answer the questions. So one piece of advice I would give is I would say, um, besides everything we've said, was to plan for like an emergency situation. A situation where, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen to you, but a situation where you um, like messed up a passage, um, you just wasted like 15 minutes on it for whatever reason and you don't know what to do. You don't know anything about the passage um, so figure out what you're going to do ahead of time, whether that's be just completely guess on the questions 
and move on to the next passage and start fresh or you know if you're going to try and reread it quickly so plan ahead for that emergency situation because hopefully again we're not planning for it but we need to be prepared for it if it does happen yeah and you know you have to kind of get used to that feeling of not really feeling like you nailed it like i feel like the reason at least most of like our friends and the people we talk to and like at least for me and you the reason we didn't like cars or the reason why it didn't come as naturally is because it seems almost like there's not really like a even the MCAT in general, it's not as like... It's not a clear choice. It's not yeah, a clear cut of an answer. Yeah, it's not very clear cut. And I feel like people who like science and math are like drawn to these like clear answers. So you kind of have to train your brain. And just like your mindset has to change. You have to be open to the fact that you're not going to understand everything. And that's okay. Like they don't expect, you yeah, know... You're not supposed to understand everything. You're not supposed to go into the test um, with knowledge of like... Yeah. bacteria or protein x y one eight five w or even like the chromosome. verbal like sometimes right. it's like they're talking about economics they're talking about stuff that like they do not expect you to be an expert or like anything like that and that's why you have to kind of tell yourself like there is a way to do it without being perfect and understanding every single word like it's almost like big picture you have to yeah. think big you, ideas you already have enough background knowledge to answer every single question on verbal all right so key takeaways is practice early start early practice consistently um, and be patient patience is bitter and you're not going to taste that sweet sweet taste of victory um what you don't like my uh... i do that's why okay I like so you're not going to be able to taste that sweet sweet taste of victory you know after like practicing for a couple hours, it's gonna take, you know, sometimes it takes like hundreds of hours of practice to be, obtain that skill. Um, and the best thing about verbal is that when you're practicing verbal, you're technically also practicing for the other sections because that comprehension comes back um, for all the other sections. So be patient, practice consistently. You know, it's gonna be hard work. Um, it's gonna feel like hard work, it's gonna drain you. But if you keep persisting through it, you're gonna get through it and you're gonna score well. Basically just, Focus on reading actively and focus on getting the best understanding you can of what you're reading and retaining that understanding. And don't focus on the time. If you do those two things and you keep your motivation going and you keep your spirits, you know, positive and you're not getting kind of too bent out of shape by like not understanding a certain passage, I think you're going to do really well. Um, again, these are really general tips, so people who have kind of been studying uh, verb already might already kind of be implementing these things. It's really going to be in the next two videos where we're going to kind of actually walk you guys through a passage and some questions where we'll give you some more specific yeah. techniques if that's what you may be looking for. Yeah, so everyone's, remember, just everyone's different. Um, we all start at different places. Just because someone's a natural at verbal and, you know, doesn't need practice, it comes natural to them, um, doesn't mean you should be at that level. Um, so, you know, just like I said, stay consistent, keep practicing. Um, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish off. So if you're interested in our next upcoming videos, uh, leave a comment below, let us know what you wanna see. Um, definitely hit that subscribe button so you get those notif notifications when we um, upload those videos. So thanks for watching, we appreciate your time. I know this was a long video, so um, I applaud you if you made it through this far. It's gonna be like a 15 minute video probably. We wish you the best of luck on your endeavors, and we'll, we'll see you next time.